See, if you know what your life work is, I encourage you to start working on it. If you can't do it all at one time, do just a little bit of it. And if you don't know what it is that you showed up to do, if you don't know why you're here, I encourage you to find out what your purpose is here. What is the meaning of your life? What will be different? Have you ever asked yourself that question? I've done that. I, I remember coming from a friend of mine's funeral and I was reflecting on how much time I had left. And I went for a walk in a park thinking about this guy whose life was so promising. And I mean, he wasn't an old guy. He was quite young, in fact. And I thought about all of the things that he said he was going to do, and he never got a chance to do those things. And I start thinking about my own life and how much time I had left to do the things that I would like to do. And at that time, I wasn't sure what my life purpose was, what my life's work was. I wasn't sure about it at that time. And I thought about it quite a lot. I had some idea, but I, I wasn't convinced that I don't think I felt worthy. I didn't believe that it could be me to do this kind of work that I'm doing right now. And I say to you that if you begin to take a conscious effort to find out what it is that you're supposed to do, I say that it can literally save your life. See, when you're going someplace and you already know how much you're going to make, you already know how far you can go, you're in a dead end position. It erodes your self-esteem. It lowers your sense of yourself. It creates an inner turmoil. It creates an emptiness in you. So I say that your life is worth finding what it is that you're supposed to do. And I'm not saying quit your job. I'm saying find it and do just a little bit of it. When I wanted to become involved in speaking, I started just learning quotes, listening to other people's tapes, going to seminars, going to workshops, asking other people to help me. Just start working at it just a little bit, but do find out what your work is and hold on to it and don't let your dream go. Don't let it go. Unless you've made some major mistakes in life, you haven't started living yet. So a lot of people, if you've never made any major blunders, made some major mistakes, lost some serious money, taken some serious risk, you haven't started living yet. You don't call that living not rocking the boat, going through life quietly, tiptoeing safely to an early grave. No, 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 no. You got to take some chances. You want to bring some adventure to your life. See, a lot of people, because they don't want to make any mistakes, it takes us to the next level. A lot of people don't want to fail. Fear of failure, fear of success, and guess what else? Fear of the unknown. See, at some point in time, all of us have seen our destiny. I was six years old, a man by the name of Reverend Ed Graham. A Mount Zion Baptist Church in Miami. I was six years old, right before Christmas, my mother was ill. We had no food in the house. And this tall, strapping man around 6'1", came to the door with a food basket in his hand. And he says, hello, is this the Brown family? My mother said, yes. I understand that you have two sons and a daughter and that you have no food. Yes, I'm from Mount Zion Baptist Church. And around Christmas time, we pass out food baskets to needy families. Take the basket in behalf of the church and have a nice Christmas. And when he walked out, I said, oh boy, I'd like to be like that man. And I went to his church and I used to watch him speak and tall and powerful and dynamic speaker, such eloquence. One of his favorite people was the poet Kipling who wrote, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. All of us have seen our destiny at some point in time and we decided not to listen. We decided to ignore it and say, no, that's, that's not for me. Life came in and slapped us side the head and we stopped dreaming anymore. Bigger Thomas said, the impulse to dream has been slowly beaten out of me through the experience of life. And that's what causes many of us to give up on our volcano. The experiences and the challenges, the defeats, the disappointments and the failures of life. Then we decide to prematurely throw in the towel on ourselves or to sell out on our true potential, sell out on living our dreams, feeling that we're not good enough, not wanting to make any mistakes, particularly if you're raised with a great deal of criticism. So you've got to be willing to prepare yourself and do the best you can, take your best shot and let the chips fall where they may. And so as you begin to look at people become afraid of success because they feel they're not good enough, they can't handle it, the responsibility is too big, I've been there. And when you feel that way, you begin to 
unconsciously work against yourself to make sure that you don't get it. You begin to sabotage your own potential in a variety of ways through procrastinating, through not taking care of business, not giving reports on time, not spending your time wisely, squandering your time looking at a lot of idle television or spend all your time lamenting and complaining about how bad things are, using your energy negatively rather than positively, complaining rather than producing. That's what we do when we're afraid of really making it. And when you're afraid of the unknown, when you're afraid to take that leap, when you're afraid to venture out there, that's a real challenge. I'm reminded about a little boy, two little guys were out playing on some ice that was supposed to have been solid. And one of the little boys stepped on a thin area of the ice and fell in a hole. And as he began to start thrashing in the water, he began to move with the undercurrent to other areas of the ice and his friend was there trying to help him beat and hitting the ice, trying to save his friend. And he panicked and he, he looked just a short distance away and there was a tree and he went and he ripped a branch off and he came back trying to get his buddy out and he just took the best he could to start scraping around the ice to make a circle and when he did he started beating on it and beating on it and there all of a sudden the ice began to crumble and he was able to pull his friend out to safety. When the paramedics finally got there, they saw what had happened, how thick the ice was. He saved the little boy's life, but what baffled them, they looked at the branch and they looked at this little scrawny guy and said, how did he do this? It's impossible. They just went beating around the ice to see how thick it was, hearing the thumping sound. Said, how did he do that? I mean, it was a miracle that he was able to just take that branch and go around, make a circle, and beat the ice and pull him through. He's just too small. It's just impossible. And an old man standing around, hearing the conversation, stepped forward and said, I can tell you how he did it. He didn't have anybody here to tell him he couldn't do it. See, sometimes life will happen to you like this little boy, and you won't have time to say no. You won't have time to think that you can't do it. The only time you will have is to act, to take the leap of faith and believe that everything is going to be all right. Take that leap of faith, trust yourself, and know within yourself that everything's going to be all right. But aren't there some guarantees you can give us less? Yes. What is that? You're going to die. In case you didn't understand that, you can't get out of life alive. So I'm saying to you, you got six months to live. Live your life now. Live your dreams now. Start. like this is your last day on the planet. See, if we decide that we don't need a pronouncement from some physician to say we have six months to a year to live in order to really begin to appreciate the beauty of life, in order to really to make some hard decisions in life. See, we have the power in our hands. Like those little boys, we have that kind of power, that kind of genius, that kind of fortune, that kind of wealth that kind of happiness, that kind of sense of fulfillment in our hands. We have that. We have that. It's in our hands. It's on us. And nobody can make that decision for us. We can give it away. We can give it to the company store for $400 or $500 a week. Or we can exchange it for how people think about us, how they feel about us, and go through life and resign ourselves to be miserable as we go to our graves 
looking good for everybody else except to ourselves. Or we can decide, hey, wait, this is the only life that I have. And that is my volcano. And I'm going to take the leap of faith. I'm going to jump in it. And I'm going to handle it because I know the universe will never give me anything I don't have the capacity to handle. See, I say to you that you've got the power within you to handle any kind of volcano in your life, regardless of how it shows up, regardless of any kind of challenge that you might have in your life. I say to you, you've got that in you right now. Where will it come from? Don't worry. If you trust yourself, it will come to you at the right time in which you need it.